National Football League on EA Sports. And the wait is over for this rivalry game. It's the New Orleans Saints and the Atlanta Falcons coming up next. First opened in 2017, there's a look at the beautiful state-of-the-art Mercedes-Benz Stadium here in Atlanta, GA. Brandon Gond and Charles Davis thrilled to be with you from the broadcast booth. And partner, before we get this thing started, what are you going to be watching? Who can talk to a fast start? In horse racing terms, they talk about catching a flyer out of the gate. Who sets the pace and makes the other team chase? it to the 25 so the Falcons make their way out behind their new quarterback for 2024 signed back in March the veteran Kirk Cousins and coming off of an offseason where Kirk Cousins was coming back from an Achilles injury he thought that was going to be his biggest challenge instead the Falcons drafted Michael Penix out of Washington in the first round and while that was a jolt Kirk Cousins has a great ability to just shake things off move forward and let his talents come through. In motion goes McLeod. On play action, Cousins. And incomplete on the deep ball. And that certainly could be a sign of things to come because they're blitzing to start this ball game. And it works for them there as they force the incomplete pass. Here's second and ten. Cousins. Open man is Kyle Pitts, his tight end. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. Well, the first drive here and the first time that we've called a big tight end's name, but I, I can assure you this, Charles, it, it won't be the last. No, it won't, because when he gets going, now it opens up opportunities on the perimeter because that'll draw the defense towards him in the middle of the field. Now your wide receivers again. To the right side and intercepted. Picked off by Alante Taylor. And the return comes to a halt right at the 44-yard line. Offensively, a far from ideal start there with a pick on the opening drive. Yeah, not exactly what they were looking for. We know that. That's pretty obvious. The beauty, though, is it's happening early. If they don't panic, they don't compound this problem, they've got a long way to go and a chance to get back in it. The Saints heading out for the first time, and there's Derek Carr at quarterback in his 11th NFL season now and second in black and gold. And Carr continues to produce good numbers on paper. He completed over 68% of his passes last season while also throwing 25 touchdowns to just eight interceptions. But as impressive as those numbers are, the numbers he's seeking, big numbers in the playoffs. And we expect him and his team to be back in the playoff mix when January rolls around. Now after the INT, it's Carr. And he'll get this one underneath to Kamara. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. To throw his car. Back to Kamara for another catch. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. A big play there on the catch and run, and it'll result in a fresh set of downs. That's a nice job right there. Get the ball out to the perimeter, get it to your guy in space, 
And he's just going to take this, turn up field, and turn it into a big play in first and goal. From the gun, it's Carr. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. From six yards away. And the Saints take the early turnover and convert it into an opening touchdown. Blake Groupie now for the extra point. And it's good as the Saints have a 7 to nothing lead. The drive there only spanning three plays. And it ends with a touchdown for New Orleans. The ball upright on the tee, and the Saints kick team booms it away. Well, now how about this return? And able to break this out all the way to the 38-yard line. Great return. So for the second time in this one, we get set to see the Falcons' offense. They threw an interception the first time they had the football, wound up leading to a touchdown the other way. How do you approach drive number two? Going back to your game plan coming in, everyone has matchups that they like better than others. Where they think they have an advantage, dial up some of those plays. Try and go to those spots and get your offense moving. First carry of the game now for the Texas superstar, B. John Robinson. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. The defense was dialed into the pass. They overlooked the draw play. And how often do we talk about the oldies are still goodies? Because that draw play comes straight from Coach Paul Brown's playbook, going all the way back to the original Cleveland Browns. Back to Robinson now on first down. Room here to run. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. That good for 22 and a first down. They had a chance to limit his yardage, but he was able to fight off that tackle. So it's not just the responsibility of the guys who missed the tackles along the way. It's all 11 on defense, able to stop this guy, unable to do it on that play. They've got to find a way. How about his ability to break through and gain that yardage? Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. To throw, Cousins. Here's a diving catch right side. Another good gain. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. I'd have to say that whenever you see a good post route run, they do not like to let it in without the catch. Hence, that great diving play. Yeah, lay it up there, let him go get it, and he got it. Cousins. Over the middle, caught by London. He's down inside the 10 to the 8, and it comes on a gain of 8. So a decent gain there, but not their fourth consecutive first down like they had on the first three plays. You sound almost disappointed there. You want to fire the offensive coordinator on that one or what? <laughs> they would gotten into a rhythm. I thought they were just going to keep going. Well, almost a win for the defense, but if that's your win, you're not doing very well right now. After one, 7 nothing on EA Sports. Back now in Atlanta, second quarter action. The Falcons with the football. Ball on the eight, second and two. As they've got it as we resume action. Throwing, Cousins. And that is caught. Touchdown, Falcons. Jarnell Mooney from eight yards out. And the Falcons are an extra point away from evening this one up. We see this route all the time, but when it's well executed, it's a beauty. And it feels like the fade takes forever to develop, like that ball is just hanging in the air. 
And the reason why is that the receiver is trying his best to work the defender inside and give himself space to fade away from him and catch the football. And that's exactly what happened there. Now the extra point. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. The drive summary that time, five plays. And finishing it all off was Darnell Mooney with a touchdown reception. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. And able to get this out to the 25. The Saints offense led by their running back headed out for the second possession. And he has been a big component of the passing game so far. You see the numbers for this first half. This defense is going to need to find some way to key in on him because he is eating them up right now. Getting set for their next drive, the New Orleans offense. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Card out of throw. There's a short one to the tight end, Johnson. And he goes out right around the 39. They'll give him four yards there, and it'll be second down. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. From the 39-yard line, here comes second down at six. From nearby Norcross, Georgia, it's Alvin Kamara. And good running there as he'll take this all the way up to midfield. The Saints first down there on a gain of 11. That's pretty much meat and potatoes right there, wasn't it? Just go right at him and let your big horse charge up the middle. Not too fancy there, was it? Nothing fancy at all, challenging that defense. And on that go around, the offense won the challenge. Staying on the ground on first with Kamara. And they'll get him down here at about the 42. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. But no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Second down and three. To throw its car. And that falls to the ground, incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively, and now it brings up third down. Normally you think the tight end's going to be able to catch the football and handle that contact, but in this case, maybe a little too much target to hit. That one was timed well, incomplete. Now Carr. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Saints first down as this defense unable to hold. It's a seven-yard gain there on third and two. We've hit the two-minute mark of the first half. All knotted up at seven. So from the 36 now, first and ten. Here's Carr to throw. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. It sort of looks like they stopped some fighting them on this series because it seemed like things were headed for the red zone. But if this defense gets two more stops, they can keep them out of that area. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings them up second and ten.
They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And that is incomplete. They're going for a receiver there, Warren. He has one touchdown in this first half, a second one not to be. I like where their head space is, though. I mean, I really like the thought process, right? You got a guy who's already scored one, right? You want to go back to him, continue the hot hand, and make them adjust to you defensively. I like what they were trying to get done, even though they weren't successful. Car going to throw. And the Falcons get there. The Falcons get the sack. Down he goes. Matt Judon in there to get him for a loss of nine yards, and that also leads to fourth down. Even keeping the back end for extra protection on third down, they still couldn't prevent the sack. Now it's fourth and long thanks to a terrific individual effort on defense. Here comes the Saints punter now. Back deep, Ray Ray McLeod. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. Atlanta regains possession of the football. Tie ball game, still a little more than a minute to go in the half. The question, can they put something together here, try to take that lead into intermission? I would have to think that would be the goal for sure. I don't think you sit on anything here. Here's your opportunity. Push it downfield. As you mentioned, it's a tie game. So minus a disaster on your part, you've got that in your back pocket. Go ahead and try and get some points and feel great going into the half. They go play action. Cousins. Pressure from his right, and he goes down hard, flat on his back. Demario Davis coming in for the sack that time. Partner, the Mike linebacker, the middle linebacker, has so many different responsibilities. How excited do you think he was to get home with that blitz? Yeah, he wants a sack. He got it. Don't need it all back at once, but you figure they're going to need something here. 17 yards to go on second down. Cousins now. This throw incomplete, nearly picked off. And with his pedigree, he doesn't drop many of those. But third down coming up. And this drive is almost over before it began, thanks to a great defensive effort. Sack on first down, followed by an incompletion. One more good rep, and they get off the field. This time they stay on the ground. And he'll get this to the 23, but that'll be well short of what he needed. The Saints going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 17 seconds to go in this first half of action. Now a man who did his collegiate punting just a couple hours from here in Clemson in South Carolina, Bradley Pinion to kick. Deep for New Orleans is Rashid Shaheed. Fielded at the 20. Well, that's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And control of the football, switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. The Saints offense on the field, ready to get their drive started. And with only nine seconds remaining, with well, not much time, we'll see how they play this. And defensively, they're just looking to keep him contained as they're able to get him down. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. Here's a second and two now from the 33. Now Carr. There's a short one to the tight end, Johnson. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. The final shot here before half for Carr. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but 
but they'll say it's incomplete. So a touchdown apiece. That's what we have to show at halftime as they head to the locker room. 7-7, seven, seven, our score. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. We thought this one would be a close battle coming in, and we have not been disappointed. They're all even to this point. This has the feeling of a game that could go right down to the wire. One mistake or one big play could turn out to be the difference. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. Set and ready to go for the second half. One touchdown apiece, 7-7 seven, seven our score. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. Out come the Saints now. They'll go on offense first here to begin the third quarter. Well, the first half, very even. I mean, really, in all facets. This ball game tied, Charles, so as we start the third quarter, curious to see what the second half brings us. Certainly am. I'm with you on that one, and we all know a lot of coaches from the NFL all the way down to the Pee Wee level. They love to spin it to their teams. Hey, we're starting a brand new shorter ball game. It's all even. Let's go out and seize it. This is ours. Carr. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. This has certainly been a physical game so far. Limited scoring opportunities for both sides. And there's another chance that goes unfulfilled. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. They'll set up to throw. And this throw incomplete. And the defender all over him that time, and it's going to lead to third down. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. Here's Carr. Pressure brought in, and the Falcons get there for the sack. Lorenzo Carter with a big-time sack on third down. It's a loss of seven. I thought there at the end he may have had a chance to release that, but that pocket closed a little too quickly, and down he went. Yeah, he was certainly trying to do everything he could to extend the life of the play, probably counting in his head. One, two, and then he ran out of time. Here comes the Saints punter now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. 44 on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. That'll be a 41-yard punt, just one yard on the return. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. Here comes the Falcons offense. It's their first possession of the second half now. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and 10. They begin the drive with Robinson. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that field like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. Working out of the gun, Cousins. Got this complete to the tight end pits. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. Such a tough position to defend near the line, even when you add a second defender. But the big man shrugged off the extra body and made the play call a success. Here now, third and a yard. To throw his cousins. Oh, he rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked up by Pete Werner. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. 
Well, Charles, he was looking for just a short throw. He kept it in range for the rare linebacker pick six. And give him full credit for his focus. He just kept the quarterback in his sights, and where he was looking to throw, he positioned himself perfectly to be there for the interception. He made the play of the game for his defense right there. Groupie for the extra point. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. Now remember, they were just out here a moment ago through the pick six, so we'll see if they can take better care of the football this go-around. Yeah, and sometimes, partner, I think it's almost better that you just throw the pick six and you come right back out on the field. You're not over on the sidelines dwelling for it for very long. You're not hearing everyone say, oh, hey, you'll get them next time. Hey, don't worry about it. All that stuff just goes right out the window. You're right back out on the field with a chance to atone. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. Maybe a little frustration starting to creep in. The offensive line hasn't done a great job of protecting him in this game. And there he was, hit again as he threw it. Yeah, another time on his backside. Probably starting to get a little frustrated. Got to keep his composure. Can't let the defense know that they're getting to him. Now Cousins. And this will be caught by Mooney. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short. So it'll be third and less than a yard. Harvey sold the go route really well. Thought he was going deep, then curled it back inside for a nice completion. DBs love when they pump the brakes, don't they? Yeah, that's really, that's really a whole lot cool. of fun. It's almost like you said, listen, if you're going to sell the go, just go. Well, let's see who's faster. Cousins. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he's going to have a Falcons first down as he's able to get about three that time on third and inches. They brought in a heavy set on third down, and that usually means running play. But we have seen them throw out of that formation. And sure enough, they snuck the tight end out on that one. Wound up hitting him for a first down. On first and ten, it's Robinson. And he gets forward up the middle, but only for a couple. It'll be second down. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Throwing his Cousins. And the third interception thrown by Cousins. Picked up by Pete Werner. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. So that a real wrench thrown in now for this offense. They're trying to make a game of this in the third quarter, but that is not going to help. Yeah, partner, probably should have used a different tool on that play, right? That ultimately is the kind of play where you could lose a ball game instead of being in a position to win. Here's Groupie for the PAT. It's good, and it is now 21-7. to So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six.
So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. And he takes this near the 25. Just a little pass there. Call it the 26. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. They are looking to make a bit of a 180. They are sputtering right now. And frankly, I think it's time to call your playmakers together and say, all right, guys, we're going to lean on you through this patch. We need you to get us back on track and get us going in the right direction. So you're calling plays geared to them. Not necessarily what you look at your plays. Oh, this hurts the defense. I want the ball in the hands of X, Y, and Z and see if we can move forward. So don't get too cute. Go to the playmakers. Back now in Atlanta. It's the Falcons. They'll have the football, but trailing on the scoreboard as we get set to begin the fourth. Now Cousins. Targeting Pitts on the out route, and he's got it complete. And he gets this up to the 34 out of bounds there. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives him a much better opportunity to convert on third down. The offense on third down, just one for three thus far. This time it's third and three. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he's going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. So in Saints territory now, here's first and 10 at the 47. Cousins to throw it. That's caught left side. The tight end pits. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. Good yardage on the completion there. And when they look at the scoreboard, they do understand a field goal is not going to do them any good. My guess, they're going to press the ball downfield as far as possible, try and throw it into the end zone and get a score because they know they've got to get that done and get the ball back as quickly as possible. Throw left side, complete to McLeod. That'll be marked as a 27-yard pickup. This defense has certainly had an outstanding second half, haven't they? I know they just gave up a first down there and for the offense. They're hoping that that's something that they can jumpstart with and maybe start to move the ball a little bit better. But it's been tough sledding for them here the entire second half. In motion goes McLeod. They'll run with Robinson. And that'll move him a little closer as he takes it from the 7 down to the 4-yard line. That's good power football on first and goal. A lot of teams will throw from there. But that's a nice job to chew for a few more yards and get yourself closer to the goal line. Second and goal from inside the 5. From the gun, here's Cousins. And it's caught. Touchdown. Kyle Pitts from four yards out. And the Falcons have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. But well, he is such a matchup nightmare down near the goal line, CD. And another example right there on that play for the touchdown. It's borderline impossible to defend this guy because that kind of size, he can still get out and run a crisp route, and he has excellent hands. Even if you stick with him, all the quarterback has to do is lob it up, and he can win almost any jump ball. And they're going to get the two-point conversion caught in the end zone. And that cuts the lead a bit further. And the formula there on the two-point try, they go five wide, not even the option to hand the ball off. They got it. They tried to create space, and there isn't a whole lot of it there. For the defense, what you're trying to do is make sure that if someone, if they're going to catch the ball, make them catch it behind you because they run out of space with the back line. But in this case, the offense figured it out. The 
And following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. The New Orleans offense set to take over. Right now clinging to a one-score lead, Charles, and I think operating within that four-minute offense with a little less than four minutes to go applies here, right? It certainly does, and that means the playbook is still wide open. But you are a little bit more careful about what you're calling. You want plays, they're going to gain yardage, how would you say it? Consistently, mm -hmm. right? You don't need the big shots downfield, but make sure the clock continues to run. Pile up the first down. And the goal, end the game with your quarterback kneeling down at the end, and you still have the lead. And what do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage. Use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. Throwing now is Carr. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. That incompletion certainly makes this upcoming third down a little bit more crucial. They need to find the right play to convert here and maybe start to tamp down a little bit of the momentum. The other side is starting to gain. And the slot man goes in motion left to throw his car. Completes it to Perry. And he'll be taken down well before the first at about the 36-yard line. I hate to surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're going to have to punt it away. Trust that defense. It's the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little bit of a cushion, and you count on your D to make it stand up. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Saints football as we get you reset. They're looking at a fourth down now as they try to hold on to this lead for dear life. Here comes the Saints punter now as he's on here to punt it away. Good coverage there holds him to just a two-yard return following a punt of 44. And it will be Falcon football. The Falcons offense and Kirk Cousins getting ready for this next possession. And it's been a struggle for him all afternoon. This defense has really done a nice job of making him earn everything he gets. And it's prevented him from getting into any kind of rhythm here today. Ten here. Here's Cousins. Over the middle, that's caught by McLeod. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Now Cousins. That's caught by Pitts. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. I like what they did there. Still keeping their tight ends involved. They understand it's not quite Hail Mary time just yet. Plenty of time and two timeouts still at their disposal. First and ten here. Cousins to throw. That's complete to Mooney. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. The Falcons going to use the second of their timeouts. As they'll get a chance to talk it over after picking up the first down.
Cousins. He's got the hook up to McLeod. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. I'm starting to wonder here. Are they trying to prevent winning? Because right now, they're laying back and they're picking them apart, moving the ball downfield. I think they got to start bringing a little pressure towards the quarterback. This is first and 10. He's back to throw. Going right side here, and that's complete. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. Hey, you got your first down. Get up to the line of scrimmage and spike it. Here's first down. Back to throw. His pass caught at the four. Falcons going to use their third and final timeout as they get it with just 19 seconds left on the clock. Now second down and a few inches. Back to throw. And this is caught. Touchdown. And now they're an extra point away from winning this thing in the final seconds. The dramatic score to tie it, and now they just need the PAT to get the lead late fourth quarter. So much for the touchdown maker. It's all about the extra point <laughs> attempter. And I can't wait to see how this one turns out. So they're not home yet. Still a critical extra point here to break the tie. And they have got the lead. So that a seven-play, 80-yard drive. And it's capped off by the touchdown and the ever-critical extra point. So it is a one-point lead here in the final minute of action. Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. And with time a factor here late, he'll just take a knee and they'll start things out at the 25. Here's first and 10. Throwing his car. It's complete. Camara. The Saints going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in the football game. Here's second down. Now Carr. And he'll be hit as he releases it. And that fall incomplete. The sound reverberating here in the dome. This is third down. Here's Carr. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. Now we'll get a quick timeout called by New Orleans, number two. That'll leave him with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. One final try now for Carr. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And it's incomplete. So their final 
Bulls line comes up empty. And with that, the ball game is over. What a thrilling fourth quarter this one was. Well, at least, I guess, if you're cheering for the winning side. An, outsta an outstanding comeback, though, that saw them completely take control and change the outcome of this game. Yeah, I'm not sure how many of us saw that coming, the way that they were playing and having the lead after three quarters. A little bit of a stunning ending because it wasn't just a one touchdown swing. It was a multiple touchdown swing for them to end up losing that ball game. Give credit where credit is due. They came off the pace and got it done. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gunn. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. It's a win for the Falcons here as we say so long from Atlanta.